Good evening. Um, my name is Lowell Bergman, and uh, I'm the David and Reva Logan uh, Distinguished Professor of Investigative Reporting here at the Graduate School of Journalism at the University. Um, and on behalf of the Journalism School and University, I want to invite all of you to what I think is an extraordinary special event, especially for me personally. Um, Tonight we have the honor of um, having Seth Rosenfeld, uh, Rosenfeld here, who's an alum of the Journalism School, as well as of Daily Cal, and who went on to enjoy a long career as an investigative reporter at the San Francisco Examiner and Chronicle. And all that time, and I stayed in touch with Seth all those years, I've known him for at least 30 years, uh, no, going on 40 years. And uh, for all that time, Almost, uh, Seth was involved in his own personal uh, quest for the question of what was go really going on here in Berkeley during the 1960s uh, when all those events were taking place. And the result is this book, Subversives, the FBI's War on Student Radicals and Reagan's Rise to Power. It's an extraordinary book, and when I read it finally, and by the way, I was waiting for years to read it and hearing about it, uh, it's an extraordinary book because it's written primarily from the perspective of the FBI, a voice that we rarely hear in public, and one that when we hear it, we're not sure what to think until we see their documents. And this book is based, as I understand it, on 250,000 documents, some of which I've seen, myself, and some of which you're going to see tonight. If you've never seen an FBI document and you might be shocked, you might want to close your eyes when you see it. <laughs> it includes, in fact, some uh, handwriting by J. Edgar Hoover himself. And looking out here in the audience, well, give me a, give me a, let's do a poll. How many people remember J. Edgar Hoover? <laughs> okay, good. So we don't have to do a lot of explaining um, about who we're talking about and what was going on. Uh, we're going to try to have a conversation, Seth and I, and go through some of this material for about 45 minutes. If we have time, we'll show you a short video at the end that's been produced by the Center for Investigative Reporting. Um, and, and, you know, uh, this is, I, I realize that this book is very heavy. It's 504 pages long, a narrative, based on the documents. Surprisingly easy read, but you have to wait till page 505 of this volume to get a glance at what the daunting process was that Seth went through when he was trying to put this together. And there is a narrative about that at page, starting at page 505. Now, just to give you an idea of, of his accomplishment here, I think, is you can take a look at the reviews. They range from Publishers Weekly that says, narrative nonfiction at its best. That's 250,000 documents. In case you've forgotten or you're too young to know, the 1960s were the template for today's political divisiveness in subversives. Seth Rosenfeld chronicles how the abyss formed, and his book is crucial history. It's also a warning, said the Christian Science Monitor. And even the Wall Street Journal said that even though they were prepared to hear all kinds of things in their review, Seth's work provides a unusual insight into what actually happened in America. And hopefully we have time a little bit at the end of this. I'm, I'm going to reflect a little bit on what I think is going, my, I myself think is going on, and you'll see we may even have an example for my FBI file before we get done. Um, so we have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, we'll do about a 45-minute discussion, then we'll have an equal amount of time for questions. Um, there are microphones in the audience. I do ask that two things that you identify yourself, if you're going to, and I'll repeat this, when you ask questions, no speeches, please. And, um, and also, Seth will be signing books when we're done afterwards. So with that, let me start with a question as I sit down. Tell us, Seth, what was going on, and give, me, give us a sense of what this book is all about. Well, uh, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. <clears throat> well, th this book is a, uh, a history of the 60s. It's a secret history, or I should say the, 
the history of the secret of the FBI's secret activities concerning the University of California during the Cold War and mostly during the 60s. And the book tells that story by examining the FBI's activities in regard to uh, three main characters. Uh, Mario Savio, the leader of the free speech movement. Clark Kerr, the president of the University of California, who turned out to be uh, in, a, in a great dispute with Mario Savio and other students. And then Ronald Reagan, who was running for governor at this time and made campus protests a uh, major issue in his campaign, and who was at odds with both Clark Kerr and Mario Savio. And, and what you can see in the book is that behind the scenes of many of these well-known events, the FBI was deeply involved with these people and with the University of California and was secretly tampering with history, trying to influence public policy behind the scenes. So what, why don't you give a little background as how did you start this quest? What got you going? Because I remember you as a young, gra uh, young undergraduate living next door to me on Her Street. Yes. Innocent. <laughs> Those were the days. Well, um, I first got interested in this when I was a student here at Berkeley in the late 70s. I was a reporter for the Daily Californian. And my editor asked me if I was interested in taking a look at some FBI documents that the Daily Cal had gotten under the Freedom of Information Act. And I jumped at the chance to do this because I knew that the FBI had been deeply involved in domestic surveillance elsewhere uh, as a result of hearings before the US Congress. A lot of information had come out. And I knew Berkeley had been a hotbed of student protests during the 60s. So I was very intrigued to know what was the FBI up to behind the scenes at Berkeley. So I looked at these documents and uh, consulted with Lowell and uh, other people about them, and wrote uh, several stories for the Daily Cal, looking at the FBI's activities concerning the free speech movement and also an anti-war group called the Vietnam Day Committee. But in researching those stories, I realized that there was much more there. I could see that there were many more FBI files that had yet to be released. So even before I had finished those stories, I submitted a much expanded Freedom of Information Act request that sought information on more than 100 different organizations and individuals, very specifically requesting uh, certain categories of records. I thought he'd get these records in maybe a year or so and finish up the project and, and move on to the next story. I had no idea that I was embarking on what would be a 30-year legal odyssey that would lead me to bring five lawsuits against the FBI and force the Bureau to release more than ultimately 300,000 pages of records even though the FBI spent more than a million dollars in taxpayer funds trying to suppress those records. So where does the story begin in the FBI files, where, in terms of their interest in Berkeley and what they ultimately did? The FBI had been interested in Berkeley and student protests at Berkeley dating from before World War II, but where I started the book is right after World War II when the FBI is investigating Soviet espionage in Berkeley at the University of California. Soviet intelligence agencies uh, were trying to get nuclear secrets through members of the Communist Party who lived in the Bay Area. <clears throat> J. Edgar Hoover ordered a massive investigation into this uh, in an effort to find out who these Soviet spies were. But what you see in the documents is that in the years following that, the FBI veered from this very important national security mission and instead came to focus on, pro on professors and students who were involved in dissent. And that the FBI went even beyond gathering information and tried to get the professors, get certain professors who had deemed too radical, fired from the University of California. But, but they did using, as I uh, reading your book, they did using wiretaps they did pick up people in Oakland, for instance, who were conspiring to get secrets. Yes, this is true. The FBI did find uh, evidence of Soviet espionage in Berkeley uh, directed at the nuclear labs. And, and as I say, that was a very important national security mission, uh, one that the FBI properly should be doing. But the files make it 
uh, abundantly clear that the FBI veered from that mission and came to focus on uh, 